All right, guys, we're going to talk more about implicit differentiation uh, today. Uh, first thing we'll talk about is how to find the second derivative of an implicit function. Um, the next thing we'll do is just kind of go back to that whole tangent line thing. But we'll do it with an implicit. All right, so what we're going to be doing here on this one is we're going to be finding the second derivative of an implicit function. Now, the first step is, of course, to take the first derivative. That's a little that chunky. We're going to take the first derivative. Now, that will be exactly like our lesson last class, so nothing new should happen here. We're going to take the root of that, we get 0. That will be 8x, and this will be 6y y prime. And we want to get that y prime by itself, so the first thing I'll do is move the 8x out of there. And then I'll divide both sides by 6y. And I've got negative 8x over 6y, which can reduce to negative 4x over 3y. Now, that's our first step, just finding the first derivative. But we do want to be finding the second derivative. And as you guys know, that means we're just going to find the derivative again. So I'm going to take this expression here, and I'm going to take the derivative of it again. So to do this, we're going to start off by doing the quotient rule. So the second derivative will be low d high minus high d low. Draw a line and square below. So let's put those in there. Low is 3y. d high is negative 4. High is negative 4x. d low will be 3y prime. The derivative of 3y is just 3, but since it's a y, we're going to put a y prime. And then, of course, we have square below. All right. Let's go ahead and... Uh, simplify this a little bit here. Um, so first of all, we can put these together, right? And that's going to give me negative 12y. Um, we can put these together here and get negative 12xy prime. And so that's actually going to become a plus because we're subtracting a negative. And on the bottom, we have 9y squared. Now here's where we're going to be doing something um, a little bit different than normal. Uh, we're going to do something with this now. Uh, we're not going to leave a y prime there. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to replace y prime with what y prime equals. And y prime equals this. So let me show you what that will look like. Okay, so that's a little weird, isn't it? Uh, now, what we can do is, so I, if I were you, I would draw an arrow like this, and then I would put a star there. And then, you know, you can make a little note there about replace y prime. Because that's the main step on this whole process that you probably wouldn't think to do. Um, so that's something you want to keep in mind. With the y prime, you're going to replace it, okay? So now that we've done that, we get to simplify some more. So I'm going to rewrite that 12x as a, as a fraction, though. I'm going to rewrite that as 12x over 1. And you'll see why I'm doing that now, because I'm going to simplify this. I'm going to put these things together. But as you guys can see, this 3 can go into that 12 four times. And so by putting these things together, I'm going to get... Um, let's see, 4 times negative 4x will give me negative 16x. And then on the bottom here, I'm going to have a y. So we'll have y double prime is equal to 
negative 12y. And then we have 4x times negative 4x. That's going to be negative 16x squared. And so I guess we'll write it like this for now. And then there's a y on the bottom because uh, y times 1 is y. And then we have down here 9y squared. Okay. Now we have a situation that we've seen before, which is a where we have this fraction inside of a fraction. And the way we've dealt with that in the past is you multiply the fraction by the denominator. So I'm going to multiply this fraction by y over 1. That way these y's cancel. And whatever you do to one term of your expression you're going to do to all the terms. So as a result then I will now have y double prime is equal to negative 12y squared. And then these double signs here that's going to become minus 16x squared. And there should be no more y in that denominator because they canceled. And down here in the other denominator we have cubed. And as a result this is our final answer. So I don't think this is reducible, so I'll just go ahead and leave it like this. But let, let's review our steps a little bit. So step one is to find the first derivative. Step two is to find the second derivative. And step three is to replace the y prime. And step four is to simplify it as much as you can. Okay, so let's go ahead and have you guys try one of these. There you go. Pause the video. When you unpause it, you will see the solution. Okay, um, I didn't finish the problem yet. I stopped right here. Um, the reason why is because I've come across something a little bit different here. Um, nothing we haven't seen before, but uh, still probably getting used to this sort of stuff, so I thought I'd walk you through it. But anyway, the first derivative, you guys should have gotten this. Um, second derivative... Um, we have written up here, and we have um, replacing the y prime with 9x squared over 10y, because that's our first derivative once again. And then once again, the 10s are going to cancel. That's nice. But now something kind of odd happened here. Um, so notice, by the way, also I did 10y times 18x is 180xy. I did 10y to the second power is 100y squared. But Right here is where we need to focus now. So you can think of this as over 1. The 10s are gone. So we have 9x squared times 9x squared, which is 81x to the 4th. And then we have 1 times y in the bottom, which is y. And this is where you guys might have gotten stuck or confused, but we've talked about things like this before. What we do when we have a fraction inside of a fraction like this is we multiply that little fraction by the denominator so that cancels out which I'm allowed to do so long as I also multiply everything else as well. Okay, so continuing, then if we do that, I would have 180xy squared um, minus 81x to the fourth over 100y cubed. Now, I don't think that all three of these numbers here have anything that I can divide out in common. Also, um, this term doesn't have a y, and this term doesn't have an x, so you can't divide any common variables out either. And so I would say this is the final answer. No reducing is necessary. Okay. Um, moving on to example two, we're going to find a tangent line. Um, and Honestly, this is just kind of like putting something old with something kind of new. and Or actually, it's more like putting two old things together. Just a different kind of question. We know how to do implicit differentiation, and we know how to find a tangent line. So now we're just going to put them together. So we have this function here. Um, we know that we need an x value. We know that we need a y value. And we know that we need a slope. Okay, so the x value is 1. To find the y value, we plug x equals 1 into this function here, the original function.
and we solve for y. And to solve this, what you're going to do is you're going to take the cube root on both sides. Because a cube root cancels out a cube. And the cube root of 1 is, of course, 1. So there's my y value. And now we're ready to go ahead and find our slope. So as you guys can see, the process for finding the tangent line is not really any different. It's just that we're doing it with a, a weirder looking function. But uh, how do you find a slope? Well, you find the derivative, right? But since this is an implicit function, we have to do implicit differentiation. So we're going to take our function. We're going to find the derivative of that function with respect to x. The derivative of 3 is 0. The derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. And the derivative of 2y cubed is going to be 6y squared y prime. We're going to get the y prime by itself, so I'm going to minus the 3x to the other side. And then I'm going to divide both sides by the 6y squared. And then I'm going to reduce. end up with negative 1 over 2 y squared oops, equals y prime. Now, that's only the half of finding the slope. The other half of finding the slope is you actually need to plug in your x value. But this one's a little bit interesting, so here's where something different does happen. You need to plug in x and y because my function here to find my slope, my y prime, I need to plug in two things. Okay, so that's the main difference here. You know, you still have an x, you still find your y by plugging it into the original equation, uh, you still find your slope by finding the derivative and plugging in x, but the difference is you have to plug in x and y in your derivative since my uh, derivative has an x and a y, I would need to plug in both. So, that's the main difference there. So my x value was 1, and the y value was also 1. I got that in my second step there. Um, if I simplify the top, I end up with negative 1. If I simplify the bottom, I end up with 2. So there's my slope. Okay, that's really the only difference, is when you get to this step here of finding your slope after you do your implicit differentiation, you may have to plug in both an x and a y if your derivative has an x and a y in it. Uh, last step is, of course, just to go ahead and put everything into the point-slope formula. And that is the equation of the line that would be tangent to this curve at the value x equals 1. Okay? So... So you guys go ahead and try one of them. All right, so there's one for you guys to try. Now I just want to give you guys a warning. This problem is a little bit different than the one that uh, is on your pre-printed lecture notes. So go ahead and just scribble that one out and try this one instead. Um, just kind of offers you some different stuff. But anyway, pause the video, give it a try, and when you're done, you'll see the solution. All right, guys, so in pink up there, you can see the solution. Now you might notice something odd. There's two different answers. Um, and there's a reason for that. But if you got one, if you got this one, which is what I think probably most of you probably just got this one, that's good. You know what you're doing. You know how to do the implicit differentiation and how to find tangent line. But a little interesting thing to pay attention to here is whenever you um, plug in x equals 1 to solve for y, you end up with y squared equals 4. Now, when you solve that, you actually get two answers. There's two solutions to that. Anytime your power is an even number, you're going to get two answers. Now, on mine, I had an odd power, so on my example, so whenever I did mine, I only had one answer. But anytime you have an even power, you solve those, you get a positive and a negative answer. Okay? And since I got two different y values, that's going to end up giving me two different slopes as well. Okay? So for the slope session, you know, you 
find your derivative, you get y prime by itself, and you plug in your x and your y. Now, since you had two different y's, you have to find the slope where you had a y value of negative 2, but you also had to find a slope where the y value where you had a positive 2. So therefore, you end up with two different slopes. And since you end up with two different slopes and two different y values, you end up with two different tangent lines. And so what that means is, is that, um, you know, I mean, imagine a circle, right? On a circle, let's say at x equals 1, right? There's x equals 1 on the graph. This isn't the, I don't think this is a graph of a circle, but let's just pretend it's a circle for now. Well, there's two places where x equals 1. And since there's two places where x equals 1, there would be two different tangent lines. And, and that's what happens there. Okay, that can happen sometimes, especially when you're doing impl implicit differentiation. Okay, um, so that takes care of that problem there. And that does it for that lesson. So a little bit of a shorter lesson than usual. Go ahead and enjoy your homework and move on to the next lesson when you get a chance. See you then.